60 minutes overtime. You don't get grease in jail. Our story this week is about Tommy Trotta, who is the quarterback of a theft ring that hit sports museums and art museums for more than 20 years. One of the most heartbreaking heists took place here at the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center in Little Falls, New Jersey. On a rainy October night in 2014, after months of planning, Trotta and his crew broke into the museum and stole nine of Yogi Berra's World Series championship rings. We were a second away from getting caught, um, get back to the house, laid the rings out. Um, I wanted to try them on. Did you? I tried them all on. I just put them on just to see, and then the next thing that we did, we start with to dismantle them. What did you do with the rings? Cut them, melted them. You heard right. Trotta and crew retreated to this rural Pennsylvania garage to melt down Yogi Berra's rings. He says they took the gold and gemstones to Manhattan's Diamond District, where a dealer paid the gang $12,000 cash for what had been priceless Yogi Berra memorabilia. It just made absolutely no sense to me. It still makes absolutely no sense to me, and I don't think it will ever make any sense to me. This is the museum. This is Grandpa The Yogi. journalist by trade, Lindsay Barra, has devoted her life to preserving the legacy of her beloved grandfather, who died less than a year after the break-in. U.S. attorneys value these objects more than a million dollars, and you find out these have been melted down for about $12,000. Yeah, it's baffling. And you go through all of this trouble to plan for months, and then you sell the stuff that you steal for, for pennies compared to what it's actually worth. And not to mention the fact that you're destroying historical artifacts with significance so much beyond the gold and diamonds that they're made of. And it's callous and disrespectful and dumb. Grandpa, Lindsay Barrett yeah. told us she's still reeling from the loss, but over the course of our interview, she shared a story about her late grandfather Yogi and his capacity for forgiveness. She recounted the long-running feud between her grandfather, who was then manager of the Yankees, and the team's owner at the time, George Steinbrenner. George very unceremoniously fired my grandfather um, just a handful of games into the 1985 season after promising he would have a chance to manage the entire year. And in firing him, he sent Clyde King, the assistant general manager, to tell Grandpa he was fired. And Grandpa just had no respect for the way that went down. But he thought George should have been the one to do it himself. And for 14 years, he, he, vowed, he vowed never to go back to the stadium while George was in charge, unless George apologized. In 2002, Bob Simon interviewed Yogi Berra for 60 Minutes. Well, I wouldn't say I was mad. I said I'd never go back to Yankee Stadium again. And you didn't for a yeah, while? Yeah, I did, 14 years. What was it like for you staying away from Yankee Stadium for 14 years? I still rooted for him. I watched it on TV. And it took 14 years. And the moment George rolled up to the museum and said, Yogi, I'm sorry, it was over. You finally made peace with him? Yeah, I did. My kids gradually came to me and said, uh, Dad, why don't you make up with him? And I said, OK, we'll give it a shot. And he came over to the museum here. He talked to my wife and I. And he said, I'm sorry, you know, he said the right things. If he didn't, I would throw him out of this place. What and did you said, say to him? I said, fine, okay. And he was back at Yankee Stadium and spent the last 16 years of his life going to Yankee Spring Training and, and a couple games every home stand and being super involved with the, the Yankees in the 2000s and really mending that relationship as if it had never happened. I think that Grandpa can absolutely understand and respect the fact that people make mistakes. He would tell you that he's made a million mistakes in his life, but what he doesn't have respect for is not owning up to your mistakes and apologizing to the people that you've hurt. So as I'm saying this out loud now, I suppose if the guys were to come here and tell me they were really sorry and they meant it, I would probably forgive them. In the spirit, <laughs> spirit of Grandpa Yogi. Yeah. The law eventually caught up with Trotta after he was pulled over for driving erratically. Police began matching him to a string of home burglaries. In exchange for a reduced sentence, he laid out for investigators all those unsolved museum heists, including the theft of Yogi Bear's rings. He also gave up his longtime crew. Four of them have pled guilty, four of them have pled not guilty. For his part, Trotta told us he regrets stealing and destroying Yogi Bear's rings. 
I do regret hurting everybody I stole anything from. The Yogi Bear family, like what, everything he accomplished in life, he didn't need someone like me to do what I did. But it can't take away what he did. He's the hero. I'm not. I'm not. Do you think Yogi would forgive him? I mean, I kind of do. Grandpa was such that if you owned up to your mistakes and you showed remorse, he would certainly forgive you. And I suppose I could do that, but I, I, I'm still mad that the stuff is gone.